Hello everyone, uh, this tutorial is going to be on push down automata and uh, this is this is a kind of concept that is that is just needed for uh, having a count a count sort of parameter to a non-deterministic finite automata. Now as you know that in in finite automata and DFA and NFA, especially NFA, you don't keep track of what inputs and what outputs that you get it. I mean, uh, you can have ambiguous a lot of inputs and a lot of uh, like uh, in a, in the same transitions. Like for example, zero triple one. Now this is accepted, but uh, because you keep on uh, transitioning the same, you keep on transitioning one many times in the same state. But if you want to keep track, if you want to sort of have a count. Uh, a counter to keep track of the inputs and outputs that you've given into the DFA or an NFA, then push down automata is the solution to that. A push down automata is a six tuple. Uh, it has a Q, a set of states. It has input alphabet. It has a stack alphabet, which is the one that keeps that keeps count of uh, the inputs and outputs and the inputs. And um, it has transition functions. It also has a start state and a set of accepting states, uh, like as usual. The only thing that's different here is the stack alphabet, right? So let's look at this. Uh, yeah, so a, it takes three arguments, a state, that is probably the start state, an input, and a stack symbol. Uh, in this transition, before, if it, whenever, when it was an NFA or DFA, you just had the stack symbol, uh, sorry, the, the, the transition state and the input. Uh, but this time you have an extra parameter which is the uh, stack symbol. So, um, after that, the stack, symbol, uh, the stack symbol also has a start symbol. It marks the bottom of the stack. A stack, as you would know from the concept of data structures, is like a, is like a container that contains lots of inputs and it is a, a, and you can just push and pop inputs, you can just push and pop things from the stack. So at the bottom, it, the, the, at the bottom of the stack, the first symbol that gets in is a start symbol, which is Z0. And then after that, you keep on putting in inputs. And X is the marker used to keep count of the numbers of zeros and ones. So for example, let's look at this. For example, you have a context, you have a, sorry, you have a language that recognizes 0 to the power n and 1 to the power n. This is the language that you have, where n is greater than or equals to 0. And that means 0 and 1 should be the same number. 0 should be, if there are three zeros, there, there should also be three ones. So let's look at the, star, uh, the state diagram for this. Right, this is the state diagram. Before I go, jump in into the state diagram, I would like to show you a small format for how to solve this when you have equal number of zeros and ones. When you have equal number of zeros and ones, suppose this is the one on the stack. First, Z0 gets in the stack. Whenever you want to keep track of zeros and ones, or the same number of zeros and ones, for example, for each input of zero, we push X. And for each input of one that we encounter, we pop X. So let's get on. We push, at first we push X when we encounter the first zero. Then we push another X when we encounter the second zero. Push another X when we encounter the third zero. And then one now that we're encountering one, we pop X, we pop X, and we pop X. And then we just left with the bottom of the stack. And then now we reach the finishing state. So this can be described in three ways. In this, uh, this can be sorry. This can be described in two ways. I'm going to show you the, the two ways that you can describe it in. Uh, there actually there are three ways. Uh, one is instantaneous description. One is the state diagram, and one is a transition diagram. I'm just going to be showing you the instantaneous description version and the transition diagram, just because they are easier to understand. So in an instantaneous description, we can formalize the pictures. Uh, that we've seen like it was a diagram format that was a raw diagram format now we could formally show the, what's happening in the stack where q is the current state w is the remaining input and alpha is the stack components from top at the left so for example this is our instantaneous description of the of the language 0 to the power n 1 to the power n so q is the state the current the start state or the current state just any state it doesn't have to be q0 q1 q2 as you can see everywhere is just q q is just in a state that's it so when you add q that time the input is 0 0 0 1 1 1 and the stack symbol is z0 
So when we encounter one zero, we push x. Then we encounter the second zero, we push another x. We encounter the third zero, we push another x. Now, as we encounter ones, we keep on popping x, and we also we're also like uh, removing the ones and zeros as well from this place to in indicate that we are done with it. And then another one, we pop x. Another one, we pop x. So then we are left with z naught, and there's nothing. There's just epsilon. That's then it's empty. And then we reach the final or accepting state. What would happen if the input was triple zero? If the input was triple zero and four ones? Let's look at the diagram. Uh, so let's look at the instantaneous descri description then. So this is the input. We, when we encounter zero, we push x. When we encounter zero, we push x. When we encounter the third zero, we push x. Then when we encounter one, we pop x. We pop x. We pop x. But uh, at the end, we're still left with one one. And although x's are already popped, and we're left with the z naught. If it if it was to be accepted, then we're supposed to be left with p epsilon and z naught, like the previous one, p epsilon and z naught. But we're not. We're left. We're still left with one input symbol. So this is not accepted because the input is not completely consumed. Let's look at a state diagram format of this. First, let's review the rules. Uh, first, we need to look at the rules to get an idea of how to understand the state diagram. So for pushing, we first let me describe this. So a comma b and then uh, goes to epsilon. What this means is that when the input is a and on the top of the stack we encounter b, we push epsilon. By pushing epsilon, it def if it actually means that we replace b with epsilon. By that we mean that we are popping b. So here. When we encounter a and the input is nothing on top of the stack, as the input is empty. Like let me just visualize, draw a diagram over here. So when we push, when we encounter a, and the input of the on the top of the stack is nothing. Like here, it's nothing. It's epsilon. It's empty. That time we push b. All right. And then when we uh, for popping, suppose the input is a, and on the top of the stack we encounter b. So we pop b. So we replace it with epsilon. Popping b means we're replacing it with epsilon. This uh, arrow is basically just replacing it, kind of like context-free grammar. So we're just replacing the uh, alphabet from the right on the on the left side with the alphabet on the right side. So again, replacing. Here we're not pushing or popping. Here we're just directly replacing it. So when we encounter a and on the top of the stack we see b, we just replace it with c. And then when we are encountering a, and on the top of the stack it's empty, we are doing nothing. We are just again replacing it with empty, which means there's no change. So we're actually definitely doing nothing. <clears throat> uh, you would ask why this step is necessary. We'll be looking at some examples to clarify why this step is actually important. Right. And then at the beginning of all the state diagrams, we always have to in, we have always have to push the stack symbol. As you could see in the previous uh, things that I've showed you, the instantaneous description and all. We're pushing a z naught as a stack symbol, but here in this uh, in the transition diagram, uh, sorry, in the state diagram, we are going to be pushing s. So at the beginning, everything will definitely be it will just be an empty stack. So there, we're replacing the emptiness with a stack symbol, all right, at the beginning. And in the end, when we're left with just the stack symbol and everything has been consumed, then we're just going to be popping that stack symbol as well, and the popping as in we're replacing it with epsilon. Right, so these are the rules that you would need to know. This is pushing, this is popping, this is replacing, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, this is replacing and this is no change. So let's look at an example. This is an example of the 0 to the power n, 1 to the power n, n a language that we have described before. So at the beginning, like I said, we're going to push the stack symbol. In the beginning, it's definitely going to be empty. So we're going to be pushing the stack symbol on top of the stack. Right. And then after that, we are, as we encounter zero as the input and the top of the stack is empty, we're going to be pushing zero because of course it will be empty. After stack symbol, we will consider the stack to be empty. Like what what that what this sentence me like what this line actually means is that this is a stack, this is the stack symbol, and then this is the place we're going to be pushing zero in. Whenever we encounter zero or x, but in this diagram, as you could see, they will just use they've just pushed zero. So when we are encountering when we are encountering zero and on the top of the stack it's empty, we push zero. We keep on doing that, and after that, when we 
when we receive the first one, the, when we encounter one as an input, we are going to be popping zero. And then we're still going to be popping uh, zero as 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 much as ones that, as as many ones that we see. And then after that, when everything has been popped and everything has been done, we are going to be when we encounter uh, epsilon as an input. That means we don't have any more inputs left. And on the top of the stack, we still have the stack symbol. We're going to be replacing it with epsilon. And then the uh, the the diagram is finally the pushdown automata is accepted. So. Let's look at another more complicated example. This was a more easier one. Let's look at this. This is the language. A to the power i, b to the power j, c to the power k. Now, this is these languages are actually uh, context-free grammars. Languages by languages, I mean context-free languages. So the problem with context-free languages is that they can't keep track of three variables. They can keep track of two variables, but uh, keeping track of three is almost impossible. It is impossible actually. So for that, what we do is for, as you can see the conditions, a to the power i, b to the power j, c to the power k, where i, j, k is greater than 0, fine, and i equals j. So i and j are equal, so you could consider a to the power i, b to the power i, and c to the power k is something. c to the power a is what? It's i equals k. So, sorry, what it means that i could be equals to j or k. So either a and b could be the same number of a and b or a and c could be the same number of a and c. So we can keep track of either one of them, uh, sorry, either two of them and then one will be left as it is. We don't have to keep track of it. So in this diagram, what they did, what the state diagram does is that in the beginning, as you can see, it's always, it always starts out within, with pushing the stack symbol, right? Now here we could take two paths. We could either keep track of a and c uh, and then forget about B or we could keep track of A and B and forget about C in this in this part of the diagram here in this part of the diagram we are keeping track of A and C and we forget about B and in this part of the diagram we are keeping track of A and B and we are forgetting about C so let's clarify when we are encountering A we push A okay and this is a no change sort of uh, scenario going on around here it's kind of like this. No change is what? Uh, a comma epsilon goes to epsilon. Means when we encounter A, we encounter epsilon, uh, so we replace epsilon with epsilon, which is basically replacing nothing with nothing. So, yeah. So here, when we're encountering epsilon, we're going to be replacing epsilon with epsilon. This is just basically an epsilon E transition as you, as you would encounter in an NFA, E NFA, to go to the next state without even uh, consuming any of the inputs. We're not consuming any inputs here, but we're still going to the next state. So when we keep on enc uh, encountering A, we push A, then we go to the next state, and then when we encounter B, we do nothing. This is no change. This is the, basically the no change function. That means when we encounter B, do nothing. You don't need to push anything, you don't need to pop anything. And then going to the next state, when we encounter C, we pop A from the stack. So here we're keeping track, we matching, mixing and matching the in, the number of A's and number of C, and forgetting about B. We're doing nothing when we encounter B. So when we encounter A, we have to keep in mind that we are, we also have the same number of A's and C's. Here the same thing is going on except that when we encounter B, we're pushing A. We're pushing A. So we are, when we encounter in the, this part, where, where, what we happen, what happened is that when we encounter A, we push A, and then when we encounter B. We pop A, so we have already keep track. We are keeping track of A and Bs together. Here we're keeping track of track of A and C together, and here we're keeping track of A and B, the same number of A and Bs. Then we go to the next state, and then here, as you can see, it's not like this. It's not like this di this part of the diagram. Here we would have just used epsilon to epsilon transition, but here we are actually removing the stack symbol because C is not necessary. Even if we encounter C at the last at the end. We really don't care what happens to you. We really don't do anything with a stack. So here directly, whenever we encounter the stack symbol on the top, we just replace it with epsilon and all the stack operations are done. And all we, all we do when we're seeing a C is we're basically doing nothing. We're basically putting nothing in the stack. So this could have been drawn in the same way as this, as in after Q3, you could have drawn an epsilon transition, then do this, C comma, epsilon goes to epsilon and then do another epsilon transition and uh, epsilon transition where you would remove the stack symbol that's up to you you could also do this or you could also do that both are equally correct 
so that's about it for Pushton Automata. Next, we'll be looking into the equivalence of Pushton Automata and CFG, that is converting PDA to CFG and vice versa. So give a thumbs up if you've understood the concepts and if you've liked this video and uh, to encourage this series and good luck.